we've talked a little bit about batteries. So what happens in a battery is that two chemical reactions go on on the inside, and the result of those two reactions is that electrons get spit out the negative side, and they get uh, eaten up by the positive side. And so if we take a conductor, it just says wire, but wire is our, our way of talking about a conductor that electrons flow very freely in. These, these little blue dots, by the way, represent electrons. So the wire is full of electrons. The battery, of course, is full of electrons. Everything is full of electrons. The wire has electrons that can move. And if I hook this up, the battery will try to push more electrons onto the wire. Of course, that's not very easy to do unless unless the electrons have a place to go. I'm going to build a little circuit here by connecting a wire from one end of the battery to a resistor. Still, the battery is connected to a wire, the wire is connected to the resistor, and the battery is high voltage on this side, low voltage on this side, so it's trying to push electrons through here. There are a lot of electrons, but there are no place for them to go on the other side. So when I try to push them through, nothing happens. On the other hand, if I make this last connection, then the reactions, chemical reactions that are running in this battery spit electrons out. The electrons that it spits out push these others around. So everything gets pushed, including some of the electrons up here get pushed into the battery, and that battery eats those up electrons up with the other reaction. So the two reactions together keep pushing electrons counterclockwise around this circuit. Now what's the resistor doing? Well, as you might guess from the name, the resistor resists the flow. The wires actually resist the flow a tiny bit, but, but so much less than the resistor that we can ignore what the wires are doing. The wires are pushing backwards as, as stuff flows, electrons flow to the right down at the bottom, the rest of the wire is pushing backwards on those electrons, resisting it a little bit. But this resistor is pushing downward as these electrons go up the circuit, it's pushing downward and they resist it a lot. So we call it a resistor, it's the biggest resistance in the circuit. I can turn this into a schematic that, like you'll see in the book. Um, battery is, is two lines, one smaller and one bigger. The bigger line is the positive side of the battery and the, the high voltage side, and the, the small line is the low voltage side, and the resistor is this little squiggly line. So I can break this circuit, split the junction, and throw away the resistor and put in a light bulb. Now a light bulb the light bulb is a standard incandescent light bulb it has a little wire up here and so it's a conductor this part that screws into the socket is metal and it's connected to this side of the wire there's a little wire that's wound around a little tungsten wire up here very fine and it has a lot of resistance um, and then the, a thicker wire comes down here and is attached to the center of the bottom of this light bulb. So the light bulb has two connections. If I then reconnect this piece, what you find is that uh, the battery can push electrons out. It shoves them through that small diameter tungsten wire and then back in again. Because that wire has a very small diameter, the resistance of the tungsten wire turns out to be fairly large. And so this is the resistor in the circuit. Energy is being put in by the battery and taken out by the resistor. Uh, the resistor ends up getting hot. When I say energy is being taken out, electrical energy is being turned into thermal energy, or if you wanted to call it internal energy is a more general term. The, the reason I called it thermal energy is, is because what it's doing is changing the temperature of this little wire. In fact, every resistor uh, has thermal energy going up. 
for this little wire, the thermal energy goes up so much that it gets very hot and glows. So there's three big things here. One, the battery pushes electrons. Two, the resistor over here on the right, or the filament in the light bulb, resists electron flow. So that's what keeps the electrons flowing at a constant speed once you close the circuit. And number three, there are electrons everywhere. If the battery spits out an electron, it doesn't immediately go through here. It takes a long time as it drifts around and finally goes through there. I wanted to give you at least two analogies that you can use to think about electrical circuits. You may not need these analogies, but they can help a little bit sometimes. The first one is a is the analogy between a bicycle chain and how a bicycle works. The bicycle chain, by the way, is the electrons. What you have, this bicycle chain goes around the front gear and it goes around the rear gear. And you all know how to ride a bicycle. You push on these pedals. That causes the front gear to rotate this chain clockwise. Rotating the chain clockwise means your feet are essentially putting energy in here. Energy is taken out on the other side because the chain pushes against that rear gear. So the front gear is like a battery. It's analogous to a battery because that's where energy gets put in. The rear gear is analogous to a resistor because that's where energy is coming out. This is uh, just a crude analogy, but a bicycle chain is a continuous thing. So as soon as you start putting energy in by turning this, immediately that starts turning too. So it's a nice analogy in that sense that energy isn't put in and then later taken out. It's taken out at the same time and, and a continuous chain here is like a continuous set of electrons around a circuit. Another analogy, and here's one that you're probably a little more used to, is the analogy between electrical charge flow and fluid flow. There's a heart. On one side of the heart is a high pressure on the artery side. And blood flows, again, clockwise, flows from the high pressure side through the arteries, through the capillaries, through the veins, and back to the heart again. This is the crudest picture <laughs> you can think of. It includes the heart, which puts energy in, and everything else, not just the capillaries taking energy out, but everything else has resistance. So everything else takes energy out one way or another. So the heart adds energy. The arteries, veins, and capillaries take energy out because they resist the flow of the blood.